when you have Krishna present to guide you through the Gita. All you need to do is follow Him. Remember that Krishna is already there. Don't imagine, don't speculate. The Gita is an instruction to be followed. The Gita is a song to be loved. Namaste Guruji. Namaste. I'm Devraj V. Subramanyam. Yeah. Working as assistant executive engineer in IIT Hyderabad. So my question is that if somebody wants to get some favor, some uh, some good or benefit from another human, uh, she has to do some favor to opposite persons in the form of uh, pleasing or paying something, something like that. This is human criteria. So God is believed as the ultimate positive energy. So then what is the necessity to please the God by offering some gifts, sacrifices, performing pujas, etc. to fulfill their desires? or uh, their well-being, or getting benefits, something like that. So if the uh, reciprocation is applicable uh, to God also, then how come the God is uh, divine and selfless? Or is it uh, fear that somebody, uh, uh, with fear, um, somebody doing all these things? So what is the purpose of, purpose or meaning of performing puja and prayers to the God? This is my question, Guruji. God, as we know him, is a human creation. Therefore, the essence of the Vedic literature, the philosophy of the Vedas, Vedant, does not talk of any God at all. Vedanta talks of the truth. The truth comes in two names. When you approach it from the outside, then you call it Brahm. Internally, you call it Atma. And Brahm and Atma are the same. And neither Brahm nor Atma is God. Ishwar or Bhagwan or God, these are not concepts coming from Vedanta. Right? Why? Because Vedanta takes the mind itself as full of falseness. Then how can a thought coming from the mind, a concept coming from the mind, be taken as the truth. Hmm? People talk of God and so many religious streams too talk of God as the creator principally. They say the world is there. So somebody would have made the world. Therefore a God is there. That's the typical theistic argument. Hmm? Somebody is making things happen here. So there has to be a creator and a runner, some manager and also a destroyer and such things are there. Right? Vedan says, how do you know first of all that a world exists at all? It is your mind that is experiencing the world and your mind is an idiot. Hmm? Go into your life and see how big an idiot your mind is. And it is only your mind that is ratifying all the time that there exists something called the world, right? The world exists because your senses testify to it. You say there is the wall, there is the pillar, there is the garment, the curtain, the such other things. So, you say the existence of world proves that there has to be a God. Vedanta says there is no proof, first of all, that the world itself exists. So, how do we talk of a God? Still, the ego loves to think of the world as real. Because if you agree that the world may not be real, then you will have to agree that you, yourself, might not be real. And that's a scary thought to the ego. I'm not real, I'm not real. How can it be? So the, world, so the ego says, I am real. Look at the flow of the argument. I am real. Why? Because, you know, 
I do not want to call myself as unreal, neither do I even want to investigate whether I am real. Hmm? I am real, therefore the world has to be real, because I experience the world. I am real, therefore the world has to be real. It's the egoistic argument in favor of God. I am real, so the world has to be real. And if the world is real, somebody definitely created the world, therefore there has to be a God. Now you see how God is a creation of the ego. I am real, therefore the world has to be real. Therefore there has to be somebody who created the world, so there has to be a God. Vedan does not believe in this nonsense. Vedan believes in nothing, <laughs> not even in common sense. Forget nonsense. Vedanta is not a system of belief. So, Vedanta seeks the truth, not any God. Therefore, such things as offering something to God to be granted a favor and such things, these are considered idiotic in Vedanta. Vedanta does not say that you have to please this God or that God or something. Vedanta is about self-inquiry. It is for the real people who want to go into the depths of truth. If you want to appease yourself with uh, just uh, shallow religious uh, beliefs and consequent rituals, then Vedanta is not for you. Are you, are you getting it? Hmm? So obviously, you see, it is juvenile, you know, a quid pro quo kind of thing. Hmm? You, you grant me a promotion and I'll offer you um, half a kilogram of gold. Hmm? Obviously, it is so much like bribing. Hmm? But uh, most people who um, visit temples and mosques and churches, they do that out of uh, two forces, desire and fear. Hmm? When they desire something, they go to a so-called God and when they are very afraid, they go to a so-called God. Hmm? And when they are enjoying their lives, they forget all about God and all. Hmm? So, that's what there is. Hmm? Real spirituality consists of ruthlessly exploring the truth. Believing in this story, that God, that book. That is not spiritual at all. In fact, it is the height of materialism. Hmm? You, do you see how materialistic this is? I am there as a material, this body. The world is there as a material. And this material proves that there is God. So we have turned the God too into material. And then we call the Americans as materialistic. Are the Americans materialistic? If your God is born out, proved only by the existence of the material universe, is your God not material then? Except for the material universe, what proof do you have for your God? So your God is a very material God. Hmm? And God is not material. It is the ego that is material and it has created therefore a material God for its own sake. Vedant is for those who want to go beyond materialism, beyond the body. Beyond, Vedant is another name for beyondness. Hmm? Beyond what? Beyond mind. And the mind is all material. So beyond mind, beyond material. Am I making sense? I don't know. Hmm? Please clarify. I am not sure I am put it. Please. So it is clear, Guruji. Okay, great. Wonderful.